stream here. I'm gonna get it. Just gotta post the link. If I can find the link to Discord. What we got? Uh, you're keeping them. Keeping them. I already told them we're keeping them. You're gonna wash them? Someday. <laughs> Someday we will wash them. Someday it has to be a unicorn. Or yeah. something, I'm sure. One of these days, I must be a unicorn. One day we will be a unicorn again. Hello. So right now we are going to start working on this week's Let's Do This event. Um, what was decided on was we are going to, instead of last week, we were in the week before you guys were shooting paintball gun. This week, you are going to be able to feed dogs over the internet. It's a completely different experience. So right now they're cleaning up the shooting area. So we used to have the gun here. And so this area will be turned into the dog eating area, feeding area. And now I gotta go and think of how I wanna make the, the dog eating device. So I'm gonna go over to the sort of workbench area. Actually, I think I'm gonna use some kind of a one of these wood pieces, most likely. Um, let's see, how can I set this up? So I think the main idea, we're going to have a servo, and the servo will... So what I'm thinking is we're going to use a servo... Um, that's going to turn and open up a slot will, where the dog food will fall into and then it will rotate that and lay it out into the dogs. So we'll have like a chute that goes down uh, to where the dogs are sitting. So I kind of have to think of how I want to do that specifically. I kind of have an idea. I'm going to draw it out. Uh, let's see if I can rotate the camera down. Let's see. Uh, something like this is stable. So the idea I'm thinking for this device is some sort of like a rotation center that has like a, a disc and that disc is a certain thickness that will make up the volume of the dog food. So I'm thinking it'd be something like a slot like this. And then as that rotates, there would, uh, so up here would be some sort of a, let's say, some sort of a tank of dog food. So we need to have this filled with dog food. That would fall in. So when it's not on this slot, it would be uh, blocked from dog food. And when this would turn, the dog food would fall into the slot, a certain amount that we would determine. And then when it turns back, it would fall. So I guess this would be like the open area um, where all of that would fall out of. So it would rotate back and forth. So really simple mechanism. Um, yeah, and then the rotational, it would rotate on, on a, I'm thinking a, a pole in the middle. I mean, you could think of, 
so there, so there's two ways we could do this. We could do a servo that would be mounted um, onto this pole. So then you would rotate the, this. But I would like to this to be expandable. So I would want to use this to use for, say, bird feed or fish feed or maybe more dog food or bigger treats. So I'm thinking of making this pole that you can keep adding on more of these pucks. You could add more of these plates so you could expand the volume that could drop. Um, so I think I'm going to leave the pole stationary and probably put a servo on the edge here. Um, and then probably it would rotate and this would be sort of like a gear that would yes stand it's on purpose and uh that when this would turn it would turn this and then if we want to expand we could expand on top of this dowel so we could add more of these plates later so i want it to be reusable now it would be really easy to do this in 3d and then 3d print it but I think it's way too time consuming. Um, and most people don't know how to do 3D, so I'm not gonna get into that. Most people can work with their hands. And I think we're just gonna use really simple materials to make the dowel, probably make this cylinder out of wood. Depending on the thickness I can find here, will determine how big we make this hole. And then after we have that set up, we can think of how we want to mount the dowel. Will it maybe be on some uh, base down here? This has to then get fixed to not move on the dowel. We need to think of the tank and then some sort of a chute that maybe goes off to where these happy, I can't draw a dog, happy puppy will be down there eating. So that's, that's sort of the idea. Um, and then, yeah, the servo would be here. So you got to think of how you want to mount that most likely from the base somehow. And then we, at the end of this, we can give it over to Esco and he'll be able to do the programming on this and we will, we'll have a dog feeding device. I would say this won't take that long. Um, so first thing I'm going to try to get some wood. I'm going to cut out this cylinder piece and let's try to find a dowel, some sort of a central axis or axis that we can uh, rotate on. So I think that's the first thing. So we have, we have a bunch of scrap here um, of wood that we can choose from. I think, where did I, I just had one. I had some sort of a piece a second ago I just found. Oh, here it is. So... I think we will cut out a circle, um, which will then have, so it would be like a, a circle that then has a dowel in the middle. Um, we have some pipes and stuff here, it looks like. I kind of like the idea of using one of these. Um, these would probably be a lot less friction when they're turning. So if this is mounted to something on its base, and then we had that 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 uh, disc rotating on this, it would probably rotate pretty nice wood against this versus one of these might be too much friction, start eating up the wood. So I think I think this, but actually this is a pretty nice base here whatever the hell this thing was. Um, that's one thing we could do. Could have it rotate on the nut. If you had the, the wood around this and we slid it onto this nut, that would, that would get rid of the, we could have the base, we could have this mounted, and it, it would only move up and down slightly because of the thread pitch. And then we just need to have the servo out here. I guess this is smooth enough. What do you guys think? Should we go with this or should we go with this? This would make it so much easier though. I kind of 
want to just make the decision now. So we would cut the wood to mount on this nut. Oscar. Oscar, are we using this for anything? What? Do we need this for anything? Or what is this from? Do you know? I have no clue what this is for. I guess we don't. Yeah. All right, well, it's mine now. All right. So, I think this makes sense. We will take this off and get this nut. So we're going to want to cut out a hole in the center of this here and then a circle on the outside of that will have to be cut. So let me try to, what can I use to mark? Does this mark? Yeah, this kind of marks. All right, so we will mark out the nut. We got a center nut area, so we'll have that lay into the wood. And then, if I had a, if I had a compass, I would be able to make the perfect circle. Um, let's see what we got. Do I have anything of a similar size? Actually, I think first we need to get the dog food. Yeah, BN, I could totally design this all in 3D. It'd be super easy, but I, I want to get this done within the next hour or two. Whereas if I 3D print, I have to wait hours, and then by the time it's, I have to get it done tomorrow. But yeah, you can see what they're doing over here. This is the area where you're going to be feeding the dogs. It's going to be very cute. Uh, so yeah, let's, let me get the dog food, because we got to think of what is the amount of dog food you want to take or give to the dogs. I don't want them to be fat by the end of the night. Because um, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a multi-hour event. So I want to give maybe a few pellets every turn, so it's not that much. Um, actually, let's check on Esco really quick, because right now he, I think he's working on the servo software. So let's take a look. Are you working on the servo right now or? Yeah. What's it look like? It's slow right now. I'm changing the settings a bit. But this is the servo we're using. Well, these are these. These can be also used. Yeah, 60 kilos or 35. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm making the, the wood thing right now and then we can test. But it uh, looks like it's you got it all hooked up here. Yeah, yeah so I already moved it. Okay. Our stack, so it's all fine. All right. You want any any codes to show? Some cheat codes? I guess so. How simple it is. Though. Okay. That's the, basically, this is the total game code for the whole event that we are gonna use. Uh, not this one. It's this one. Okay. It's basically fifty lines of code, and that's it. Fifty lines of code. There you go. To turn a servo. All right. So now we work on the wood, and then we can uh, get it hooked up with Esco's servo. It's not going to be that long. Howdy, howdy, Sam. Welcome to the stream. Right now we're just building the dog feeder device. So I got the dog food. I'm going back over to the workbench. We just saw Esco's code, 50 lines of code. It looked like less. And now I'm going to, jeez, <laughs> scared the hell out of me. All right, um, and then I found this, this thing just laying around. And we're gonna use this as our central pivot point of a disc that lets dog food drop out to the dogs. And we'll have a little 
a little uh, I drew up here. This is that central piece. There's a disc. Dog food is in a tank. When it turns to open up to that hole, um, and then turns back, the food will drop out into the dog's mouth. So right now I'm going to work on getting this wood situated. So we got the nuts. You can't see it probably, but I got a little etched out hex here. Um, this is the, like I'm thinking if we did a couple pellets of dog food, you're not going to overfeed dog. I think we'll be okay with a few pellets. So I don't think we have to get too extreme with the size volume, but I guess if something gets caught, you might only get like one, so maybe we make it big enough for like four. So four of those. Let me see if I can get a better tool for etching on this. Uh, well, I got more random tools here. So I'm gonna use a dr drill bit to mark out. I mean, worst case, if it's too big of a hole, um, that we allow of dog food, I can always fill it in at a later date. So I think we will be fine. Um, so right now this is, I'm etching out this hole here in the wood. And then because the wood is a certain thickness, it's going to allow a certain amount of these dog pellets to drop into its uh, recess. So I, I think I definitely made it too big if I only want a couple. Um, but like I said, we can fill it in later. I think it's better to be bigger now than having to deal with it later because I'm just going to cut it all out. Um, so then it's going to be a circle on the outside. It doesn't have to be. It could actually realistically just be this. Um, but I guess in terms of weight balance, maybe we'll just make it a circle or somewhat of a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, so let's see, do I have a compass or something circle around here? This is about the, this is about the right width. All right, so if I put this somewhat using it as a circle, we will make a circle, and then I'd be able to cut this. There we go. Got a nice circle. We got our sort of etched out hole. I'm going to probably bring this a little bit more inward. Um, and I think it's now just time to cut it. Then the nut will recess into that, then we can drop it on the dowel, and then I gotta figure out how to keep it in, in one location. If I can find another one of these nuts, that'd be golden. Otherwise, we'll use something else to maintain a holding point, so then it can rotate on something. Um, or we could just use this. Anyways, let's see. Uh, let's cut it. So, looks like we got a cutter here. Someone bought this recently. So let's... Get this all set up here. This part should be pretty simple. Um, if this is all working. Is this even plugged in? Safety first, I'm going to get some uh, glasses really quick. Mm. Alright, no safety first, we don't got no glasses. So let's just cut. It's got a cover on it anyway.
can already tell you, this is not going to be a perfect circle. But it's good enough. Um, so yeah, we got our disc now. It's at a thickness that's about, it's a little bit over one pellet. So I guess putting it for four pellets, it, it's probably going to work. Um, so next we will, uh, yeah, that's, that's right, Christian. It probably won't matter. Um, <laughs> thanks Ezekiel. Um, yeah, so let's see. Uh, yeah, so about four. So I'm going to mark these out. What we're going to do, the easiest way to do this is to really just do, you take a drill, you drill on every part you want to put your blade into. You drill, 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 and then cut across to open up through these. Um, but we do want this to lay inside of here. Um, and then that will be based on this, this center rotation piece. Um, for those who just tuned in, this is what we're, we're building here. It's a dog feeder. So it'll be a tank of dog food that'll come down. When it's closed, it's not going through the hole. When it opens up, Dog food drops in to that volume that's there, and then it dr turns back and drops what's available. So a few treats per turn, uh, people online will be controlling, and then it goes into the dog's mouth, who are happy. Uh, there'll be a servo, uh, which will be here acting like, a, like on a gear, uh, which will turn this rotation here. Oh yeah, five. That is you, five. What's up, uh... I can't pronounce the word, owner tap tapioca. All right, that's how I read it. Welcome, uh, we're just building a dog feeder that you're gonna control over the internet on Friday. So right now we've got this disc cut out and I'm gonna start drilling out the hole here. Let's see, what tools we got? We got, we got a drill. Oh, good, good, I need a bit. This one's good enough. And we will just start drilling our holes. Get this all situated. I think that's roughly the corners of this nut. Um, we can perfect it later, but first, I don't think it's going to be 
too bad of a situation to let's use I think we'll use this drop into each hole cut through so this is a handheld version of what we were just using uh, looks like I need the blade so we got a blade here batteries. And let's start cutting. I'll try to do it a little bit undersized just in case. feeder. Is that your sketch? Yeah. Is that a dog or a rat or a rabbit? <laughs> that a is a chupacabra. <laughs> I only know how to draw chupacabras. Ah, oh, yes. I can see it now. Yeah. What do you see? Chupacabra? Uh, yeah, yeah. 100%. I see yeah. that. They're making fun of my drawing. That's that's a dog, or a chupacabra. It's like a Walmart. But all the food comes in through there and then drops into the chupacabra's mouth. Got it. It's a very small chupacabra, big device. That's right. Mm. It's like a budget. Budget chupacabra. Mi budget Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Walmart. It's a surrogate Mickey Mouse. <laughs> that's all we can do unless we get sued. All the express. All the express Mouse. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> So now I'm just trying to finesse the nut in here so it's actually stable um, when it's in that area. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, again, this is like a prototype. Um, these ex Friday experiments are more prototypes than final. Like, they don't have to be perfectly polished, they just need to work. Uh, so let's see. Slowly expand the hex. Decently close here. Uh, what do I want to go with this? this one. Now it's just this wall. I think I could bash that in with a sledgehammer now. Or I might bust the wood actually if I do that too early. Um, I'll do a slight cut. get a hammer but yeah as was pointed out in the chat it doesn't have to be perfectly weight balanced because this thing is so light and it's gonna be 
rotating on this anyway, so I'm not going for perfection here. I'm going for just functionality. Now we have a centerpiece that can be rotated by a servo on the outside. It spins pretty nicely, actually. I think with the uh, the leverage and the distance out from the middle, it spins way easier than a normal nut would. So now the next thing is to cut out the hole that uh, is going to let the food drop through. Um, the hole I had already marked here was like a little bit too close to the edge, so I'm going to just cut inward a bit. Um, but we're going to do a similar way that we did with the center hole. Is we're just going to drill a couple holes, drop this in, cut out the square, and then we are good to move on to the next step of this dog feeder. Forgot the battery. As you can see, I have the four holes there, and then I drop in the saw, and we'll cut that out. Awkward position here because it is not in the middle now. We have our hole. So we have our hole for the dog food, which will fit. So let's see if this is on the ground, like it's flat here. So we fit in probably three or four per. Maybe it'll, it'll actually, let's see the stack kind of. But we'll have uh, the tank here. So then when the tank of dog food is closed off, nothing will fall through, it turns back, they fall in, then you have enough, it goes off, and then drops. All right, so, simple enough. Let's stick this on to our center axis here. Now the question is, what do I want to do as a tank? And how do I want to mount all this? Because we need a mount for the servo that ESCO has. Uh, we need a mount for the tank. I guess the tank mount could come off of this. It would make the most sense, I guess. Um, really wish I had another one of those nuts. I could have had something kind of up here 
easily on this, but I think we're going to, hmm, let's see, what kind of stuff do we have around here? Um, and it, I guess the tank is going to be somewhat heavy, so this, maybe this isn't the best place for it. Maybe it's going to have to be a separate unit, unit that stands off and holds that. And maybe this just is for aligning purposes. So maybe a, a wood, yeah, maybe a wood platform that is on top that has a, a tank. And we can kind of slide the wood platform over the over this area and use this as maybe an alignment. So we always know it, when you put it there on top, it's on the right spot. So closed, open, closed. And then we need, after, after all that, we'll, we'll test with ESCO and then we'll make a shoot that shoots off to the dogs. Um, so I think right now I need to get some wood. Luckily we have plenty of scrap here from other projects. Um, let's see. A bunch of random scrap. Actuator disassembly. No actuator attached. Luckily, these are actually both the exact same size. So that could be the, if we were thinking, the height. And then the tank that we have to make also will have to sit within it. And actually, probably a soda bottle would work perfect. You know, like a Pepsi bottle? Yeah, let's go check. Do we have any of these? Pepsi bottles like we're doing this really hacky but I think it's actually gonna work just fine we need to just find do we have any random bottles in here let's go for a walk to the kitchen oh yeah by the way there's all the claw machines uh, there's a big claw machine and here is Batman all right, let's go. That's where you're going to feed the dogs. All right. Yeah, I think the best is if we had one of those one liter soda bottles, we would be set. Oh, right when I walk into this room, one liter soda bottle. So if this worked as the tank, we cut off the top, we can hold a lot of pellets of dog food in it, and then we would be able to uh, just refill it. Then we won't need such, so much like structure to hold this on top of that. Um, I'm wondering if there's something we could do with just, well, if you wanted to do it really ghetto, we could use a, a box. You could have a box, you could cut a hole, have the soda can, in the box laying on top of that but that's too janky i think we're gonna think of something with a little bit more structure so let's head over there see what we can come up with And this black curtain here, this is all Mario Kart, Mario Kart stuff. So if you guys play Mario Karts on Fridays, you're playing inside of this big curtain area. All right, so idea, curtain idea, is that this would be on top. Um, and it would let, when this rotates around, it would let the, the pellets out into that hole. And when it rotates back, it's closed. Um, so actually, I think we maybe even could attach it somehow to this. And I don't think it'll be too lopsided. Luckily, the base on this is pretty heavy. Um, so we lucked out on this. Worst case, we can screw this into some block of wood um, if we need more weight. So I guess there's not too much to worry about on that. This drops out. 
I guess the, the main concern at this point would be, does this jam up a lot? We need to get the distance between this just right. And considering it's on a thread, it's slightly going to move up and down when this is turning. So we could run into a jam situation um, where we'd have to just redesign this and put it on one of these one of these dowels and do that. But let's let's try it. Let's try it in a sort of hacky way because you could buy one of these just threaded pipes or threaded uh, rods anywhere. You can get some wood. You can cut it like I just did. It took like five minutes, and then. Yeah, I can see you guys' messages. I see you, owner. Yeah, so anyways, let's uh, see what I can come up with on this here. Or we might just have to go back to the drawing board. But uh, I think we should be okay. So, I think first thing is figuring out how you want to mount this. Um, yeah, it does, and of course this piece of wood is not perfectly level, but when it does turn, well, I guess that's one advantage. We could have the high point on the turn is up here, and then the low point moves away from the bottle. So I guess that works. This is how the system's going to work here. And then the dog food is in How do you make sure it's not getting like, you know... Getting what? Like stuck somehow to the... Well, that's the thing. Pretty. This is on a threaded rod, so right now it's at the high point, and when it rotates down, it goes away. Mm. And then it rotates back up to the hole. Mm. How do you rotate that with the servo? So we'll put the servo out here with its own piece of wood, and it'll act like a, like a gear. Mm. So your servo just turns like a... But like with those servos that has has this thing on top, you could just somehow attach this directly to the top of yeah, the Yeah, you servo. could, but then everything is on the servo as the rotation. But, but if, like with this... That's too bad with that. Well, the, the, idea, the reason I went with this is because we can expand this. So if we wanted to have a shit ton of bird feed, for example, mm. just build more of these. And then you could still have the same servo on the outside, and we could have tons of volume. Mm. Yeah. Versus now it fits four. Uh, dog pellets for these. See. So it's expandable and we don't have to move the servo or change anything. We okay. just keep it in the same spot. That's the idea. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll. Like, it's going to work, but it's going to maybe leak or do something weird like it jammed up. But we'll figure it out. Well, I guess you can test that even without the servo. Just hold that there. And... Yeah, we will. Yep. We'll test it soon. Um, but your, your code's all ready? Yeah, the arrow is all fine and ready. All right. We can it's put a, soda in there. It has some coke in there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is this trash? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's the silver robot parts now. Uh, a bit. A little sticky. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, the next two more session is going to be a bit slower than usual. <laughs> Everything's jammed. Jammed. Um, is this good? A little bit noisy. How's everybody's ears on the live stream? So here, off, and back. So I'm trying, I'm thinking like, how do I want to mount it to this? Hmm. Um, like best case, you'd have something that is on here and something that's on this neck, and then just like a piece that goes across. Maybe I just get a piece of wood. And this could mount on the wood, and the wood goes on the... Yeah, I think I'll do that. Yeah, maybe that's easy. So I'll just cut a couple holes in this. So, actually, there's probably a piece that's smaller. Yeah, it was already cut 
piece. So, now the question is, do we have proper tools to cut holes, like a hole saw? Well, why do you need to, like we have, like, I guess we have, you know, this and just big enough, however you well, call it. What's I'm saying, it's called a hole saw. It's like a saw that's a hole. Yeah, so I agree. Oh, okay. I don't know if we have yeah, any. I was we don't have drill bits. Things. We don't have any drill bits this big. Really? Yeah, that's, okay. that'd be huge. It's like a one and a half inch drill bit. I think I've even, like, it's if, like we, if we It bought, looks kind of like this, but it has... If we bought the basic set, this comes with those. Like, I have uh, this at home, and... It no, it comes with drill comes bits. With it comes okay. with drill bits, but not the whole, like these things. Yeah, I know what you what, what you're talking about. Like it's like this circle that has like, yeah, and you, like it's just like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so your drill kit came with those. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's not a standard thing. Actually, you see, like this is maybe too big though. Yeah. This is a tight bit. Well, this is a big one. Is it enough? Like for yeah, the Yeah, not for a coke. Opening. How about this though? Pretty close. Nah, it was more like maybe this one is a bit bigger. I think you found it. Yeah, that's pretty damn close. Right. I can file that out. Yeah. And then that this smaller one actually would fit on this. So we are good. So I just gotta make a thing here, a hole there. Uh, so first we'll just cut this. So. <laughs> this is very professional to use tools here. Yes, it is. small hole. You're going to be able to hold it? Uh, we will find out. <laughs> I there is that one though. There we got a voice. Maybe easier. It should be attached to something, I guess. Well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good enough. I don't know. Uh, 3%. <laughs> That's not too much battery. Um, I can get one. Yeah, if you could ask Stan for a power bank or somebody. Yeah. Alright, so this hole, the cutter was actually a little bit too big of a hole. Um, I'm not sure if we have a smaller one. This one might have actually been better if we use this. Actually, that is a little bit too big as well. Well, let's try it. The piece isn't completely uh, useless because we can still make that hole bigger for the Coke can, for example. This needs to be somewhat precise because we need a match up to that hole. So we want it to be here on my 
this here, which is basically centered on the exit hole. So now we can go over and cut this. How does it fit on this? Not so bad. Let's see if there's... There we go. Are we back live? Yes, we are back. So... Is there space for... I can turn this, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Oh, but this is... Yeah, I need USB-C. Yeah. All right. So now... As you can see, this should drop down uh, into the correct hole. This is a little bit, this was, this bit is the only one I had. It was a little bit too big for this, um, but it should be fine. Just got to figure out a way to keep this here. Um, but we'll figure out the distance once we get... Well, I guess it should just be as close as it possibly can. And then we need the hole big enough to hold the Coke can. Um, so the next one is I'm going to make this hole here big enough for the Coke can. It looks like this one should be just big enough. Uh, so let's see. So we'll move back over to the vise change out the bits to the, to the big bit. Yeah, the problem now is I uh, already cut the hole and these are not centering. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of force here. Uh, see if I can get this. It might just be a complete disaster. darn close on this coke can. Uh, I think the hole is actually... Whoa, in. you can it, screw it in, that's perfect. We wow. got a really stick like It's actually screwing perfection. into the wood. We got lucky here, people. Uh, so let me just try to center the screwing. <laughs> it's like just wide enough. I think, uh, well, it is, it is pretty much good enough. Does it stick? Or no, but I'll, I'll, I'll get something to glue it. Yeah. Uh, what do we have? Well, I thought you had the power thing oh, yeah, with you. Right, let's see, what do we have in terms of glue or adhesive or something? We got fast glue, um, filler, what the heck is this? Uh, contact, I guess this is contact glue. WD-40 fixes everything. Yeah, I'm not gonna WD-40 it. Uh, or we could just use a bit of sandpaper and get the whole big, big, bit bigger. Sand. Yeah, I can get, I can file it bigger. I'm just wondering, do we have anything that maybe would dry super fast? There's always, uh, 
Yeah, this is the shelf of many random things. <laughs> For sure. Uh, we have a lot of super glue. This is like a two part super glue for plastic and something. Hey, there's always uh, hot glue. We could use a hot glue gun, actually. There's no heat involved in this project with the dog feeder, so we shouldn't run into any issues with hot glue. I think we have a hot glue gun right here. Look at that fancy. Yeah, I'm not going to put it too long on there, the, uh, the hot glue. Uh, well, that seems like my phone is going to shut down. It's pretty good now. Yeah. I think we're going to have to come right back, everybody. The, uh... Battery here is running out. All right, we're back. We ran out of batteries. This thing started at 70%, and uh, within less than an hour, the thing was zero. All right, so the current situation where we left off was we were cutting a hole for the dog food feeding compartment to uh, land on this piece of wood. So when this turns, dog food would drop down into that hole, um, which then would move out of the way and fall out of a chute. Um, so right now we got the hole to cut on this, it's slightly too small, so I'm just going to file this out a little bit. Maybe we can get it in there. There's got to be a file here somewhere. There we Still needs some more room. I'd like to have a like an actual wood file. This looks like it's for metal, um, so it's not very coarse. But unfortunately, this is what I got. It's gonna work. It's just gonna be very slow. But luckily, I don't think we need too too much to get this Coke can, Coke bottle to fit in here. is a watertight seal. I got that in there. I crushed the bottle in the same time, but no worries. It's still going to work. Okay, so let's remove this. This is no longer a Coke can. It is a dog can. So that's going to be Rotating on there. Um, it's a mystery to me where that part fits in, given I don't know what most of the other parts are yet. Okay, so for those who just tuned in, the idea behind this is 
on Friday, you're going to be able to feed uh, some golden retrievers, some dogs, over the internet on surrogate.tv. So, yeah, you thought it was sponsored by Coca-Cola. So what, we're, what I'm making here is a device that's going to let the food uh, drop out to where the dogs are. So every time you play, you're going to be able to control a servo, which is going to move this slider. The food's going to drop in to that crevice that was in the, uh, the slide, uh, that, that disc. The disc is then going to rotate out with approximately four or so pellets. Then they're going to drop out of a, of a designated spot in a chute to where the dogs are. So it's pretty much like this drawing I made in the very beginning of the live stream. You have the tank of food, drops down through there, shoots into this is a dog, a happy dog, um, into his mouth. And there's a servo on the outside, which is turning that disc. So we'll mount a servo somewhere over here that turns. So now we had to make this stationary. Um, uh, a servo, Sam. So there'll be a servo on the outside here. Imagine this is stationary. The servo will turn like a gear. So the servo will come in, grab the food, come back out, drop the food. Come in, grab the food, go back out, drop the food. And this is going to be the movement. So it's a really simple program. Um, it's just when you guys click on your turn, you will be able to make it do like, it'll, one click will go boop, boop. It'll drop out, the dog will eat it, next person's turn, boop, boop. Um, and I think we will, we'll think about how much we want to allow you to do on your turn. I think that's on your turn. Um, but per click, it looks like it's going to be about four pellets. So, so let's see here. This is... the bottle and then down to drop because I'm thinking it's a threaded it's a threaded rod um, which could shoot somewhere it moves away from it which doesn't have any friction so you might have less chance of it getting jammed so maybe this is high point that's low point So we have to make this stationary somehow, so where it doesn't move. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of the nuts that goes on this. So options are basically gluing it to the rod, and that would keep there. And then we just put this up to where we need it, and then put a servo at that distance, or could probably jam this hole just full of some something, maybe hot glue, and then throw it on. I think that's going to be our easiest, our safest bet. Uh, it requires the least amount of work. So we just hot glue it, shove it in, let it dry, and then we're pretty much set. And then I'll probably put a little bead of the hot glue around the bottle, just as, just as, just in case, just some extra support. Uh, trying not to melt it, as was mentioned in the in the chat. Um, so yeah, let me heat up the hot glue gun and we can start on that. It's like this black hot glue. It's pretty cool. Um, and then after that, we're going to need to make some sort of a way to mount the servo. So that's when we're probably, I'm assuming right now, going to cut out another disc, a circle piece of wood, the same as this. Probably put some tape on the outside so it has some, uh, some grip. And then those would rotate, so the servo would rotate on the outside here, like a gear. So we'll decide on that when we get there, probably in like five minutes. Just need this to heat up. We can finish this and then move on. Um, yeah, not sponsored by Coca-Cola. 
Coca-Cola. It's like dog food. So up, down, up. I mean, we're like 70% of the way there. This is not too hard of a mechanism. It's pretty simple how it's going to work. Um, but after this, I'm, I'm, after we make this and we get the servo mounted, we're going to get it all programmed. So we're going to show you how the program works. We're going to do some uh, tinkering with it. We're going to try to drop food. So that's, that's going to be pretty soon, actually. Um, there's only a couple steps left, and then we're ready. So let's see. Do we have... Is this hot yet? This is the, this is not hot at all, it's barely hot. Slowly heating up. But we'll get lucky. If this works first try, then we're, we're good. That means we'll have this thing done early and we can already Maybe even let you guys test it today, because we'll have it. We'll, we'll take this and we'll hook it up to surrogate, because that's where it has to be, so we can actually move the thing. And maybe we'll even open it up. We'll give you guys the link in the live stream here to just go and test. We'll put a camera somewhere you can see it, and uh, you guys can help us alpha test uh, the working of this. Um, so that that should be interesting. We can see if all that works today. And then we're totally ready for Friday. And then right now we're working on the other in the other area over there. They're put, putting the cameras in different spots and making it look cute because we're gonna have two goofy golden retrievers there. Um, so it's gotta look it's gotta look uh, relevant to cute little puppies, cute little golden retriever puppies. We were um, actually discussing with some dog shelters. We were thinking of allowing you to control a, uh, a ball or something like this, feeding the dogs or puppies over the internet. Um, unfortunately, the ones in factories, dog shelters or animal shelters, that uh, you could basically donate to play with the dogs, that would be something we'd be interesting in helping with. And of course, all donations, 100% would go towards the shelter. So. These are just kind of experiments, but I think that, like the ones we're doing here, but I think they could be used for a lot of good things for other places like dog shelters um, to raise adoption rates as well as to uh, just make some uh, additional donations to uh, take care of the animals that they have. All right, it's almost heated. Okay, it's getting there, it's getting there. I think this gun is on its way out. It's not even gripping the, the hot glue. There we go. Oh, no, it's barely gripping. I just need a little bit so then I can get it on here. And then I can go top and bottom on it. Whatever this is, don't buy it. Co-Craft. I think we got this at Klaus Wilson. Um, this thing is garbage. I'm pushing it with my hand. It's barely... This thing's been sitting here for like five minutes. We should wait until the hot glue is hotter or will cool down faster. Yeah, it's not... Uh, it's been sitting here for like five minutes now. It's not even really hot. Let's see. <laughs> That's like a life hack video. All right, so here you're going to make some earrings out of hot glue. And then it's like a perfect gold earring. And it's like, oh, yeah. And then she puts it on her ears and she walks away. Yep, life hack.
you just make a make a star with some hot glue boom you have a house and now you can live in it not clickbait all you need is a hot glue gun yeah true chuck it in the oven Man, it is just, this is like the worst hot glue gun. It's finally getting somewhere. All right, I think now it's okay. So, now we're going to go around. This is just to, I'm just trying to get it into the threads. So then it's basically threaded onto this and then that should hold it even more give some more surface area and I'll do top and bottom and then I'll work on the uh, coke can part of this man this hot glue then now giving up again. All right. Now, the thing I have to do is try to level this before it dries. And then also make sure it's not too much that it stops this from getting all the way up. Because this needs to be able to get up here. Actually, that was probably a mistake. Shouldn't have put any on the bottom. So I'm going to take all of that out. It's not enough space if I have glue there. Oh, well, that's the good thing about using a hot glue gun. All that stuff peels off. So we'll just peel off the bottom. Actually, I'll just rotate it down. And then just hot glue the top. solves that issue. Yes, making mistakes. This is my first mistake of the whole whole project. It's cut me some slack. So far this has been working pretty smooth, but we'll see. I'll hold my breath until I uh, get to the servo part. So I'm going to go I think best is put some hot glue in the middle, give it some thickness, drop it on, and then hot glue the top. What is with this gun? This thing is definitely like broken or something. Okay. Come on. Yeah, if you ever see this company, Co-Craft, don't buy their hot glue gun. This is absolute garbage. It is not letting much out of here. Okay. Alright, so we got it around that. It's pretty much level if I can hold it there. And then this. Is our rotation enough are we do we need more space well, I think we're good actually okay so once this dries um, we can then get to the servo side which will rotate it I think I'm gonna just put a couple drops around the coke can to hold it there it's pretty much screwed into the wood already but 
Just give it a little extra. If the dogs lose interest in this, will there be a human substitute in a dog costume? Uh, yeah, I'll put Esco in a dog costume. And at least we have somebody you can feed. Or maybe they'll have to have like a whole, the whole bottle will have to be like beer. And then uh, you'll just drop beer into Esco's mouth, like, ah! And then have the chute coming off of that. Or maybe it's nuts, and then he's drinking beer. I guess we have options if the, uh, if the dogs don't want to eat it. But I promise you they will. My dogs are uh, never stopping to eat food. They will eat until they pass out. Um, so we might run the event more than the hour that we normally use for this Let's Do It events. Let's see how they like it. Okay. So, looks like we're pretty much dry. So this is going to be the up position, and then the down position drops the food. And I guess this mechanism is pretty much set and good to go. We'll see how it is when this actually has weight. Um, I need to make, so now the thing is, uh, I might have, I should have did this maybe a different, different way. Uh, I need to make a blocker now. So a blocker for when the food is here, uh, so it doesn't fall out immediately. And then it's open on this side. So now the question is, I need, how do, I need to make something that comes off of here and blocks. I think I could do it from this wood, actually. I could have the wood come down and basically be like a, a like a C. So I can just use some hot glue and do that. If I was going to do this again, I would make two of these discs. Um, but again, I don't have another one of these nuts, so it's not going to be as nice. But I could use two of these discs, then the bottom disc has no holes, and then this disc has the hole. And then the other one, it just has a cutout for it to drop when it goes sideways. But, uh, yeah, let's cut some wood. So I think we'll come off. Let's see. We can come off. And is there something... One of these could work. Um, it's, like a, it's like a 90 degree bracket. This could then be attached to the wood um, to block it from falling. Or Yeah, true. Esco deserves the beer. What if people queue up and just don't feed the dog? Or what if there's no one in the queue? Uh, there'll be plenty of people in the queue. Uh, definitely there are going to be people clicking to feed the dogs. Because why wouldn't you? But it's not going to take that long. I think we'll give you guys each like 30 seconds. Similar to the, to the shooting game that we had last week. I think it was 30 seconds. So you can decide when you want to feed the dog. 
We might even extend this to have two shoots, so you could decide if it goes left or right. But this is like the first prototype, and then we'll see if we want to improve upon it. Um, but yeah, uh, if we need to improve on it, we can rebuild this. It's not a big deal. So this is just to test it. We're going to test it with ESCO's code um, right after this. So I just need to finalize this not falling out. And we are going to be ready to go over to ESCO. So I just want to find what's the best way here. I think I'm kind of leaning on the wood. The wood idea. Have that come up. Unless I can find a better piece. That is the question. You can see the issue I'm having here. I'm going to have to cut this. I have this coming out here. So I'm thinking I'm just going to just slice this off. So then we can run a, a bracket down. And then I could bend this bracket to then cover the hole under the uh, under here to stop the food from coming out. Um, or I run it like this and then we put a piece of wood up into that it's kind of going backwards now from where we began um, of course you always learn how to do it better after you've already made it so I think spacing it off somewhere this could be, if I can just find another, a better 90 of this, I think we'll be set. Actually, this might be a better 90. Yeah, we could run a 90 like this, and then that could have the piece of wood screwed off of it into here. Um, there's an in between here though. I want to like a thin so I can actually bend it. I don't want to have to be doing any cutting of thicker stuff. Actually, I think this will work right here. This is like a thin metal that you can cut probably pretty easily. And this is definitely bendable. We can glue it to here, drop it down, cover the bottom, good to go. So I'm just going to get a cutter for this. And if you have one, just cut it. Tougher than I thought. I a better cutter somewhere. There's got to be a better cutter.
worst case, you can always just bend it back and forth. The metal will fatigue and eventually snap off. What you do when you don't have the proper tools. There you go. All right, so idea would be to hot glue it. It would then bend downward to here and then come around this point, bend in, and block. You can put a piece of wood on it to block the pellets coming down. Simple enough. Bend this a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So, we need a small piece of wood, which I'll get from over here. Actually, this one looks like it's going to work perfect. Just a random piece of wood. And, uh, Something like that. Almost looks like it was supposed to be like this. Uh, this is definitely an afterthought. But I think it's going to work. So I'll just hold this in place and then I'm going to start hot gluing this. And it is covering everything, so I think we're good. Now it's working. This thing takes like 15 minutes to heat up, apparently. And then when this, this is dry, I'm going to flip it over and we'll be able to coat the bottom, coat it up in there. And I think it should be strong enough, but we'll know in, in testing uh, when we get it over to the servo. I guess a lot of this is drying. I could already start on either using something existing or just turning this into a gear. The problem would be that I'm not going to be able to cut a perfect enough hole. I don't have the right tools here. So maybe there's a better way. Um... Let's see. Uh, what's up, Whiteout? How you doing? Possibly had to tilt a piece of wood on your hook thing, like a slide out and to fall through the hole. Yeah, the idea, Sam, would be that this piece of wood that I have now on the bottom is going to block it when the pellets fall into the recess, which is the thickness of this wood. And when that rotates out, I'm just going to let it fall out of here. So then later we just make a chute. We're not going to make it right now. We just want to get to the testing. But later we'll make a chute that would match up to that and then drops out to wherever the dogs are. So most likely this will be raised up uh, somewhere away from the dogs. And every time you would click, that would just turn and let it drop out into the chute. So I think it should work uh, for now. And we can we can start testing really really soon. How much RAM do you recommend for a Pi for be running an FPV or C core? Uh, I don't remember exactly what was the what was the best Raspberry, but that's the one everybody's recommending. Because um, we usually run everything at like 1080p or 720p, so we want HD. So we always use the most powerful Raspberries for that. We've had the best experience with those raspies, so we just, that's the only ones we buy. So, um, I mean, with lower resolution, like 480p, you're probably fine with any of them. Um, the ones that we support, I don't remember exactly the models, but uh, we will always recommend the most powerful one just because you know it's gonna work. 
All right, I think this is somewhat dry. So now we're just gonna fill this all in with some more hot glue. Apparently I ran out of hot glue. <laughs> Luckily I got another pack. Let this dry, and we are pretty good. Hopefully, we'll see how it works. Because um, then we, I can try to slide it, and we can stick some food in here already. So I got this dog food. Let's try putting some pellets. And I'm hoping, if this is working properly, pellets have already fallen into the little uh, area, so that when let's cross our fingers, this this is this is how it should work. Oh wait, it's still still drawing. Okay, I don't want to I don't want to turn it yet. We're gonna wait a sec. Actually, I think I should. No, I think I might have accidentally glued a little bit on the slider. So let me move it while it's still. Molten hot, burning my fingers. I'll just take it off the slider. It's just barely on the slider there. There we go. And then, if we're lucky, this might need more support actually now that I'm looking at it. I might have to run another metal piece. But this should be. Let's see, did any get in? Okay, what are we jamming on? We are jamming on... I think it's hot glue. Let's see. Okay, so dog food came out. We slide it in. And then what happens if I slide it back out? Does more dog food come out? Yes. Slide it in. Dog food comes out. Slide it in. Dog food comes out. Okay, so it's basically working. I can see it's a little bit too flimsy. Um, this Coke bottle doesn't want to let the pellets fall all the way in. They kind of jam it up right in here. So it's not even the mechanism itself that's up in there. So maybe the Coke bottle is not the best thing. Let's see what happens if we put a lot of weight. A little bit of weight maybe helping. Okay, so no, the weight's not helping with it. We're kind of jamming in the, the neck of the bottle. And they also jam so there's pellets stuck in between here. So the servo needs to be decently strong to not jam on that. Let's see. Basically, we need to be able to crush dog food for this to work. Um, because it might get jammed inside of that area. Basically works, but basically doesn't because of this neck. It would basically it would need to be hit, and then turned, or hit, and then turned. That's the only way it kind of works. Uh, 
unfortunately. So I could cut the bottle about here, then drop it down, reseed it with some hot glue, and then I think we're on a decent path. Um, if this hold here doesn't block also, but this funnel here is just somehow it's these these all just touching each other. So I think I am going to remove this this dog food holder and have to make the neck bigger. It seems to be the way. But not too hard. Simple enough of a fix. Just going to remove this and then cut it. Luckily this is all just plastic. So, um, of course the hot glue is already dry. I need to find... We can have, we have a lighter or something of heat. It's quite a bottleneck, yeah, indeed, indeed, that is a bottleneck. So this is going to be at Surrogate TV headquarters or Shane headquarters? Uh, this will be here at Surrogate. So we're going to have an area, I'll show you the area in just a sec, um, that's being built out for the dogs to run around and you guys are able to uh, drop the food. I have an idea, one player gets a hammer to strike the bottle and the next player moves the door. Put a sledgehammer to... Uh, serve for us also the control yeah true so here you have uh yeah we can make that work where is it yeah you have this and then doot, and then and then doot. yeah it's two-player game two-player game guys you gotta work together as a team to get dogs fed but overall it, it works it just yeah i just got to take this off now so let's see if i can just peel all this stuff off it's already hardened that's the worst part i'll tell you what this uh hot glue is definitely strong i'm gonna see if i can find a lighter i will be right back here I'm gonna walk really quick you're hooked to the wall so i'll be right back I didn't find a lighter, I found matches. <laughs> so that we're gonna we're gonna do some real redneck stuff here. Um, we're going to melt the hot glue with uh, matches and try to release this bottle. matches okay so next we're gonna cut this bottle and actually before we do this we should test is this hole gonna be the problem um, do they get jammed up when they're in this hole so let's see the idea if we move it they fall in. See, that's the issue right there, is they're kind of jamming inside of the that area there. 
So this really does need the flexibility to move down to allow for the rotation. Or this needs to just it's interesting. Let's let's try this one more time here. Let's fill it up with some dog food. It's full. We turn. It worked pretty good that time, but it's still a little a little tricky. Um, because if we're talking about reliability, this might not have it in this current design. Unless the servo is just very strong. Um, in which case, we're probably going to rip the top off. It's almost like the servo has to go like this. Which is not, we're not going to do that. We're not going to program the servo to do that. So how can we mitigate the risk of this thing being torn up? Um, could make this wood thinner, so then there's nothing to jam against. Um, Possibly, or or we have to use different pellets. If we use different dog food, it wouldn't be so oblong shaped. We can probably find actual circles, but that's probably hoping for too much. I don't think I've ever seen perfect circle dog food. So I think we have to deal with the fact that these, see here, here's the issue right there. So you can see when the dog food is sideways, it's jammed up against the, uh, the edge there. So then you have to rotate back or crush it, but then you need like a, a powerful enough servo uh, to keep crushing. And the thing is, we don't have feedback. If we just have a servo there, there's no feedback to know that you had a blockage. So the servo might start turning. You're probably just going to have a turning servo. This isn't going to move, and then it's going to rotate back, and someone misses their turn. It's going to go keep doing that over and over until eventually somebody's turn loosens the pellet. So like right here, I have it jammed, rotate back, rotate forward. So the second player there would have actually let the dog food come out, and the first player would have had a turn where nothing came out. Um, yeah. Other option, mm. I was thinking another option could this could be higher up, give more gap, and then you're just gonna have food falling off the top. But it's gonna be really messy if we do it that way. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's true, James. It's definitely a hopper now. Oh, on the on the merch store, this shirt. This is the original. This is the original surrogate shirt. This is our company corporate sort of logo, and then Surrogate TV has its logo. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll release these on the store. They're pretty good shirts. They fit really nice. Um. Yeah, so oblong shaped dog food is here. And when they jam, you can basically scrap the whole thing because it's going to get.
turned. Like right now I'm turning it and you're going to ruin it. But I'm thinking if, what if we came one turn down? We're giving a little bit more gap. So let's see, if we pile these high, maybe it's just a space issue. Maybe it can be solved with more space. I think we just solved it. Let's try this again. Uh, so we put dog food. I just gave more of a gap here on the top. So here, no jamming. Come back. Now there's three stack jamming. You see that? We almost had it. Um, should always give it one more uh, space there. What if we go down one more? Let's try this. Just keep giving more space and see if it changes anything before we potentially change the top piece. Okay, first one good. Comes back. Second one good. Comes back. Third one good. Comes back. Fourth one. Caught. Yeah, it's like you need even more space on the top here so they don't get jammed. Or I could funnel in the side so the more likely that it will pop out versus getting jammed against a wall. So it's almost like if I funnel or fill it this side, yeah, I think that's what we're going to try. We'll fill it the side that is actually crushing them right now so that when a pellet, instead of being jammed against a wall like this, and it can't move anywhere, like it's at the top here, it'll be tilted. So when it comes across, this is more likely to just pop up and there's no jam. So I am going to try to take that handheld saw and try to come on an angle across and see what we can do. This one actually have, if, if we had a better file, like a coarse wood file, this wouldn't be such an issue. But this is a metal file. What? What are you live streaming? Uh, uh, we don't feed dogs. And you can see all the food on the ground. <laughs> I've been eating a lot, so testing the dog food. That's what you're building. This is what I'm building. It is a uh, flux capacitor, and the dog might go into the future. We don't know. Uh, it's hard to tell, but Nikola Tesla already popped in and said this was a bad move. <laughs> so. <laughs> and you're live streaming it on our YouTube. Yeah, right there. You can see. Right there. Yeah, you can see it from the screen. So everybody's watching me make a flux capacitor. Perfect. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can do this in a somewhat reasonable manner where I don't destroy this entire mechanism. This is a very awkward position. It's not meant for this. It's actually working though. Uh, so we just gotta get this piece off. So 
So what I did is I sort of uh, just chamfered this edge. So hopefully the pellets start to pop up versus being crushed. At least that's the theory uh, that could potentially work. So I'm just going to get the little pieces off and go for round two. Let's try this. Um, so we put some pellets in. Let's see, does this work? Well, first one actually worked. Let's see if we can do that a few times before we pat ourselves on the back and we figure out the issue. Nope. <laughs> it's because this top is hot glued, it's just going to keep moving. Um, so what is an option? Another option is make the hole bigger, the recess bigger, so it turns all the way out. Hmm. It's not, it's not working the way that I would want, where you'd give a selected amount of volume and then turn that volume out, but if you made the pocket big enough, there would be nothing to jam on because there's always a pocket allowing for more food to build up into. And then when you rotate back, you're kind of forcing it back up, but it might be less force needed than crushing the pellets. Um, so I'm just going to try to cut this bigger. Let's see if that will actually solve it for us. Um, and then we can move on to the servo programming. to then make this bottom uh, wider, but that's not a big deal. So if pellets are in, I'm going to have to definitely buy new dog food. These are all full of wood. So this turns, and they come out, this turns back, turns, they come out, this comes back, turns, nothing came out, comes out. So we might get here and there turns that might not give too much, but I guess if we did on every turn, it does one, two, like if it did one, two, you'd get some food, and then one, two, like the first part you got food, and that'd be more. So I think we actually have a working solution now. Um, I can bring this back up, so now it's... Nicely flowing. Okay, so one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, that should work. Okay, I'm going to make this slightly bigger still, and then, uh, and then make the bottom piece bigger to hold it all, and we're good to go.
this to be slightly more covered on the bottom, and then we're going into programming. So I found a, another one of these pieces of wood, and I think if we put a piece of metal across, hot glue it, then we're set. The uh, cutters. Okay, so we'll hot glue this to here. And then we will hot glue the other block All I did was add another metal bracket to hold another piece of wood, just to, because I made the, the, the hole bigger, so I don't want it to fall out. Um, yeah, crushing the pellets. Yeah, I don't really want to crush all the food, because then the dogs are just eating powder. Another option is to load the pellets into the paint poke gun and fire them, yeah. Uh, uh, it's not going to run all day, but um, I think we're going to run it for a few hours. Uh, we'll let the dogs run around in the area. I give them some toys and things like that. Mm. Yeah, that's true. If you had the control of the servo moving back and forth, you could jiggle it. But I think we're going to have it set to a certain amount of, uh, like it's going to be set to, when you click, it's going to do a certain thing. So if we decide that when you click, it does a jiggle, maybe that's the best way. Um, or it does one, two on the turn. But we'll decide that when we get to the programming, uh, after this is dried, and we can go over to the servo. I'm just going to add some more hot glue here. Move it to the sun instead. And hot glue runs out really fast. You barely use anything. It's like evaporating. Come on, 
What is wrong with this gun? See, this gun again is just not working. This thing's been heated up for the past half an hour. It's super hot, but nothing's coming out of it. It's not gripping onto the uh, glue. I think we will take the drill bit and just push it out. That's kind of jammed in. Okay. So it's here. Try the pellets again. We got pellets, moves, 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 moves. So this is the starting point. If it's at this angle. This is the starting angle. It moves. Now the jamming is still sort of an issue. Um, I'm thinking if I should redesign this in a different way. Uh, maybe with just blades. So one way that I was originally thinking is there would be a really thin blade on top and a really thin blade on the bottom. And these are both servos. So when this servo opens, it brings in a certain amount of pellets, and then it's so thin it just slices like right in between pellets, and then this one opens up and lets them drop. This one closes, this one opens, this one closes and opens. So that's another way of doing it that would be really straightforward because then you just, you'd have a rod and you'd mount a servo and a servo, and it would just turn and turn and you just need a pipe like a tube with some cutouts it's just moving in and out um, whereas this you know, this really thick block which is gonna get jams so that is an option um, if I can find some tubing around here <laughs> but is it worth scrapping this yet not entirely sure Because it's basically working, it's just working in sort of a janky way that I'm not really happy about. Yeah, because no matter what, still get a jam because there's not enough force in the back. If you make the hole bigger like I did, there's not enough force in the back still until it gets to the wall to push it. And when it gets to the wall to push, you start to jam. So... It's a bit of a conundrum. Um, let's see. What if we use something else? So I was thinking if we use blades like this, they're so thin, they could basically move through the pellets. Because they'd be so loose. But I guess that could still jam. Still quite easily. Yeah. It's not perfectly going to move through. And this isn't strong enough to really cut them. So that's the issue with that.
you guys think? Writing anything in the chat here? Um, you could even reverse that and have a servo push them up over the top of the holder and then down a slide. I mean, if we got unlimited use of forwards and backwards, yeah, you wrote, I, saw, I read that already, but I didn't see your pushing thing. That's true. You could have it pushed up and then they would fall out. But so the thing is with this one, and we have some constraints. So what we want to do with this is we want to reuse the servo. Because in the last game where we did the aiming of the paintball gun, we, we used a relay for the trigger because that was a relay template. That's the same we used for the shocking game. So we reused it for the trigger. Then we said, okay, we want to make a servo template that other people can reuse. So we use that for the aiming. So we're reusing that template for this. So the constraint is a servo. Um, I mean, there's a couple ways we could do this. It could still be a tube. Imagine a tube, but then this gear moves and it picks up the volume and then drops it down. So it'd be basically this circle, but one side is open, the other side is open, and as it rotates, and then it could come back pick up, but again, we're going to run into the jamming issue. Um, could also have like blades like this, like a cross blade moves, moves back and forth. Or you do something with no walls, then you could No, then you wouldn't have any jamming. It just kind of sits on the on the top of things. Of course, you could do like a injection molding machine. You could have just a, like a feed a feeder drill bit, which is just feeding pellets out of the end, out of the extruder. Um, but I think that might be too complicated for this. And again, it's a servo, it's not a motor, so we're not going to be turning constantly. It's got it's going to be moving like this. That's the servo movement. It's like 200 degrees that it moves. Uh, so that's the idea with this is that we just move back and forth, back and forth. Versus if it turned, you could continually make a mechanism that things just drop. Right now I'm just debating, do we go forward with this and make this better? Because I have some ways I could do it better. Or is there something I'm not seeing that could be a better way of doing this? Um, but maybe I got stuck on a certain method, but maybe there's a better way. I mean, the other way that could be potentially super simple is you have your bottle, the servo, it all depends on the speed of the servo. So if the servo goes really fast and comes back, you get that amount, um, which was brought up by Ollie actually here at the company. He was saying that we do that, but I was kind of thinking if the servo fails, everything just keeps falling out and this thing doesn't come back. So you have the problem that maybe it gets jammed there. But I guess if it gets jammed coming back, it's not a big deal because then it's not going to fall out anymore. And when it's open, of course, it's falling. Or if you have a small enough tube, you just load them in like a long tube and then then you're dealing with single pieces at a time. Like a single, like a tube, imagine is the same width as this pebble. 
stacked on top of each other. And you have some way of just turning, opening and closing for these to drop out. Singles. I don't know if we have any tubes to do a test. We can do a test on it just to see. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so we could, Fabian, use a, sur uh, a solenoid, but we were, we were kind of dedicated to doing this event with a servo because we want to build on top of the servo template uh, for other people to use. So there is a constraint of we have to use a sort of hobby grade servo. What if the wall pushing the pallets is on an angle so it pushes some and the ones in between are pushed upwards? Yeah, I tried that, Christian. Um, before I made the hole bigger, I had this angled, this wall was angled up. So when it turned, I was hoping it would push things up, but uh, it didn't work so good, so I made it bigger, and now it doesn't work. I think it maybe works even worse. Um, I mean, I think this could still work. I'm just thinking, is there a better way of doing this before I just give up and say this is okay? Because we can make this work. This is, you put a servo on it, opens and closes. You get some pellets sometimes, some pellets you won't get on other times. So maybe it just moves a couple times, boop, boop, boop. And if the servo is not super fixed to this, if it jams, the servo could potentially still move and then move back and then move forward. Yeah, if it's not like a gear, right? Because we're not using teeth. So if you had this rotating and it's not like on teeth, if once it jams, it just this servo just keeps spinning until it's at its end point and then it rotates back and then pushes the thing. So I mean, it, it should work. It should be fine. But I'm thinking, is there a better way? See if I can find some other materials around here. Let's go for a walk. Let's see if we can find some other materials just to get an idea. Um, let's see. How much kilograms of servo? It's the ones we're losing right now is 30 kilos. Um, yeah, I was rounding the edges already. That's true. You could file the exit hole and angle towards the kind of sharpener when it up. Yeah, that was the idea. Wait, what the heck? Are people's messages getting deleted? What is going on here? Fabian is getting uh, deleted somehow. What is going on with Fabian's stuff? Oh, okay. Like it says that you got all your messages are deleted. Does anybody else see that? That his messages are deleted? Anyways. But I see you. I mean, does everybody see Fabian? Say it in the chat. Do you see Fabian saying, yeah, deleted for him too. What the heck is going on with that? Wait one second. Let me sit down here and try to figure out. Mm. Yeah, let me click your name. All it gives me is options to remove, put you in timeout, hide, and channel add moderator. Oh, you see him now. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't know what the heck that was. He's not banned, so that's good. If there's a mod deleting it, it should be shown. Yeah, okay, I don't know. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of thinking if we had a tube, like a small tube... Oh yeah, here's the from last week's event. Yeah, it's probably Stan. 
screwing around. Thinking something's going to pop out. Hey, I think I, something might have just popped out to me. Like, I have tubes like this. And if this had, if we could just pack them full of those pellets, you might be able to just have a servo opening and close, opening and close. And if it's fast servo, you might just get a random amount, but it's not very much that would come out. So let's, let's do a quick test. See if this pipe could work or not. We'll just test it with trying to do it by hand, and that'll give a, an answer, hopefully, if it's got potential. So we'll be go like oh, of course, these are just too big. Dang, I thought this was going to be the perfect pipe. Okay, back to the drawing board. Let's look for another pipe. You might hear some buzzing. Hmm, sounds like a drone. Somebody's doing stuff with drones. Soon TM. Uh, actually, I can give you guys a quick sneak peek give you a sneak peek this has never been talked about you hear something that's all you get that's all you get something's happening over there with drones all right, let's see what else can we use. Because I'm thinking tube. You know what? This tube is kind of nice. Um, but I don't want to remove it from the paper. What, Fabian, is your message getting deleted again? Oh, yeah. True. Oh, yeah, I have it marked so it doesn't delete uh, bad words. It asked me at the beginning of the live stream, do you want to um, monitor bad words? And I put no. Um, trying to see. Is there anything we can use? Yeah, you guys are working on servos, huh? Yeah, <laughs> it's a servo works up here. It's, um, You're just I'm seeing just what the tarot right cards now. say. Yeah. Yeah, that's tarot cards. All right. Man, if I could get one of these pipes off, you could use one of these. But then no one has a shoe mount. Not that anybody's using the shoe mount. Yeah, they're definitely programming. Uh, yeah, those guys are super busy. By the way, this is our office. <laughs> they were, they were definitely working right now. This is kind of something. What is this? Oh, I thought this was a tube, but apparently it's not. This is some IKEA thing. Um, my knee on the PC. 
Yeah, the code's compiling. That's right, Bullen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, everything is do-it-yourself material. That's what I'm always doing. I'm like, hmm, should I take this pole from the light? Uh, let's see. What can be used? This is kind of the same shape as the uh, pellets. So if you put all the pellets in horizontally, we just need to have something on the bottom of this box. This box actually might work. So let's see. It's like a box of LEDs, I think. Oh yeah, we were, these are the LEDs we use on the pinball machines. So we put these on the sides of the pinball machine, face them down on the glass, and then it illuminates, and you can see the pinball machine better. I think it's one of the test ones um, that we had. I think we decided on some other ones in the end. But I guess no one's going to need the box. So I'm thinking this opening could work. So imagine if... We just had us quickly comes back and forth. Boop, boop. Ups, with a, some sort of really thin metal. We might have an, let's see, let's, let's think about it. If we Had it. Now I'm thinking something like it would just be super simple. The chest go really fast. Doo -doo, doo -doo. Or even just down. If it went down quick enough and back like that, it might even be good enough. We can do the test. So let's go get some dog food and let's do a test really quick. I'm just trying to see if there's another option besides the one we already made uh, that could be better. Because then we would just base it on the time that it would be, that, that the pellets would uh, be allowed to come out, which means then you could change volume, then you could use bird seed, then you could uh, do different types of food or whatever. Still, so it's still expandable to other things if it was something like this or some other pipe. Uh, yeah. Hard drive arm would do this job perfectly. Yeah, true. Just push the, uh, the pellets. From the hard drive arm. Alright, so here's the test. We're gonna fill this up with dog food. Let me plug in the phone. Because this thing is beeping again that it's low battery. There we go. So this is a potential idea. I'm not saying we do it, but could we do? Could you move this fast enough? Uh, yeah, let's put more pellets in and see. Is this a potential? Because then it's just about the speed of the servo. Um, which could determine how much comes out. But the problem with this is for sure, the more volume or the more mass you have on top, it's gonna make more come out uh, in the beginning and potentially also work against the servo. And then when it gets lighter towards the end, you're gonna have less if you use the same parameters 
of the servo speed as you did in the beginning. Um, but let's see. All right, so I got a lot of pellets. What happens if I go really... Oh, I was kind of holding it. Okay, they're all jammed inside. Maybe this needs to be a tube. Yeah. See, again, you're running into that jamming issue. Dog food is, is not a good shape. So what if I just make this into more of a circle? Just for testing's sake. I think there is potential with this sort of idea. But we need to have something that doesn't get jammed up. And I, even a tube will probably have the same issue. Found this. Let's try the same technique, same method. We'll put a bunch of dog food in here. Let's see. Is this possible? Because if it's jamming up in this, I, mean, I think we need a completely different method. Um, just because of the weird shapes, it kind of grinds apart and they kind of just jam up on themselves. They get like they pack into each other. All right, so quickly. I mean, quick. <laughs> I mean that works. Uh, that works. That was a, a shit ton of food, though. Um, and I was going pretty quick. With it, but that's a really simple mechanism. If it was like that, maybe we wouldn't open it completely. We would just have it sort of do that. So we basically put the the wood on a hinge, and we just open it barely. So then, it, yeah, then it would it would be dependent on how much we let it really open. And then how long we let it stay in that position open. But this tube seems to work uh, for the for the concept. Uh, and it kind of had the added effect of it started throwing it. It didn't just fall. It because when it comes back up, it kind of kicks the food up into the air, which is kind of a nice effect, I suppose. Um, we could go with that. Yeah, true, Christian, that, that's true. You could do it at an angle. Yeah, it could be at an angle with that, or this could be at an angle versus coming, or sorry. This could be at an angle, or this could be at an angle. And you would basically let it, the gap be smaller. So in that case, this is really easy if we do it this way versus what was already built with like a complicated mechanism for the actual volume. So all we'd need is the servo attached to this. I think we could even test this already if we go over to Eskol. Let's take a look at his code, see if he's got something on the servo already working. Uh, does this power bank work? That is the question. No. So I'll take the charger with me and we'll walk over there.
one sec. We want some sort of piece. Yeah, I think this works. Maybe this. But yeah, for those who didn't see, uh, this is going to be the area. So it's the same area we were shooting, the paintballs, but it's all been cleaned up. All the plastic is off the walls and everything. And we're going to put the cameras in different locations on the corners. And then we would have the feeding tube maybe somewhere. And then the cameras will be up. And then the food just falls out into the dogs. I don't know. We'll, we'll test that when we get there. Um... But yes. All right, Esco, you got your servo? Yeah. We're going to do it even easier way. We're going to use a flap of this and put it on the end of a tube and go. It works. I, I tested it. Okay. Uh. Do you want to attach the servo already or? Add the what? Like, do you attach the servo already? Just take the servo from there. Where is it? It's next to my table. There's the 60 one. It's maybe there or then in my table. Which one are you using? Well, we. Which one's faster? The 30's yeah. faster, probably. Okay. Well, just take it from there. I can come to show it to you. Okay. Uh, Can't drive, man. Check it out. For fuck, open the door again. Let's go. Yeah, you can't even see the door, dude. That's fast. Holy crap, that's fast. Yeah, this animal is here. Holy crap, dude, you're controlling that thing like crazy. Let's see. I'll see when it comes this way. Let's go! No! <laughs> Actually, I lost camera. Did you know? He lost. Oh, because he hit it? Yeah. Nice. Well, All right. That proves you won. All right, so Esco gave me this servo. 35 kilos. Um. Hey, you don't you don't have the uh, attachments to the servo, do you? Uh, the gear and the screw that goes with this. I think Levy knows more about that kind of stuff. Is Levy over there? Yep. Where's Levy? With the small blind pig. <laughs> Is that the servo box? Yep. Careful with the car. Alright. I guess I guess you can put it here. Alright, got all the parts in here. So we have our attachment collection. <laughs> Alright. Nice. So I'm sure one of these fits this. This metal attachment as well as this flat. Right. I think like these are 25 feet ones. So you can try if it fits with that track. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's. Looks like it's. Yeah, it's 25. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's a bit pretty strong. All right. Cool. Thanks. And I guess any of these servos is going to work if we just pick one, right? They're all the same yeah, connection on the back. Same interface. Yeah, okay. Alrighty. So we will try one of these. Yeah, I made a mechanism over there. It was like a sliding thing that let pellets fall in and then pushed, dropped them out. 
But then I did a testing. This works better that basically you just go. So we have a fast enough servo. So probably one of the less kilo servos will be faster. If we just kind of go quickly. Yeah. It's enough. And when it comes back up, it kind of throws it too. Okay. Which was kind of funny. So I don't know which is the fastest servo we have here. This is a cordless servo. And if my internet research uh, is any value, I think this should have pretty like lightweight staff. Okay. And should be fast. So you can, for example, start trying with this one. Okay. Yeah, I guess these most of these must have like a speed. Yeah. Operating speed 0.11 inch. Well, what's that in relation to per second, I guess? Okay, 0.10 per second. Oh no, per 0.10 for 60 degrees. This is 0.11 inch for six. 0.11 seconds for 60 degrees. And then we have 0.15 seconds for 60 degrees. What are these ones? Right, so when you run this servo at uh, 7.2 volts, it's 0.22 seconds per 60 degrees. Okay. So 220 milliseconds. To do 60. Probably like a, I don't know. So a half a second to open and close. Yeah. That yeah, might work. That is probably roughly the fastest that you can get out of these servos. Like there are faster servos, but yeah. they most likely don't have I guess we don't have any high speed ones. Yeah. All right, cool. Then I guess I'll use this one. Okay. All right, thank you. If you can use that servo turn serial dry food dispenser. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to do something, uh, Boland, that we just make here really quick. Um, yeah, Fabian, come come by anytime you want. So I need to hook this camera to power. Run out of battery. All right. So, if we go with this method that we were messing around with. Something like uh, mounted, and this would be closed, and then we'd have a flap attached to this metal piece. So when it opens, we'd say 60. We don't want to go 60 degrees, but we would go to something around 20 degrees and then shoot back up quick. So just here and here. Um, this is going to be unbelievably so easy now. If we just zip tie this servo to the pipe. Did you say zip tie? Yeah. <laughs> we zip tie this to the pipe and then uh, put a flap on this and then we're, we're done. And then ESCO can get it after that. Um, so I'm even thinking we screw into this metal plate where we get some other, we'll get a thicker metal to be the flap or even cardboard to be honest would work. Um, Is there a central pin for this? Hey, hey, Oscar, 
I think we'll do that. So we'll make a metal bracket that comes off that's here, and then off of that we'll hot glue a flap of some wood or something <laughs> that will just go back and forth. And then it's just programming. So actually, yeah, it was. I think it was a better idea to do it this way, even though we already built the other one uh, that will work. The other one's more prone to getting jammed. This one, if it flaps and flaps back and there's something jamming, it doesn't matter because it won't keep flowing. If something does flow, it doesn't really matter because the other one, it'll just keep the, the flap. We'll make it somewhat flexible. So it's just going to hold the pellets. And then it'll flap back out and flap, 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 flap. Yeah, I think this, this will be fine. So let's run over and make the bracket off of this, and then we're set. Esco can then hook this up to the raspy, and then we can try it. Um, yeah, so let's, let's go do that. <laughs> Fabian. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff here, and you can see. The famous free claw that Jeffman has a thousand wins on. Thousand seventy wins, I think. And someone's playing it right now. Let's see if they win. Yeah, if you guys want to see something cool, check these puppies out. So these are uh, Japanese slot machines and a Japanese pachinko machine, Batman themed. Been wanting to hook these up for a long time, but we just haven't gotten to it. But the cool thing is this can use the uh, the servo or it can use relay to control the buttons. Uh, and then you could also do a servo to control the pachinko. Uh, side. So we'll get to eventually when we're done with the templates for the servos and the relays and the motors and all those things. Because then you can really just use them for anything. Like even a solenoid. You could just do a solenoid here and the solenoid could do the clicking. Uh, or even this could maybe even be done with a solenoid but you kind of want more finesse here so you just use a motor. But for some things like a slot machine you can just have three solenoids Four solenoids. But yeah, we'll get into that eventually. There's a lot of uh, random projects around here that we're working on. But right now we're trying to do these building blocks. So we're sticking to a servo. Even though there's definitely better ways to do this with a motor or other things as uh, people have suggested in the chat. But we want to just give some examples of things you can do with simple, simple uh, components. So, as said, we want to make a flat a bracket that will open and close off of the servo here. So we want a 90 degree bracket to come up and then go across. So I do think, again, this metal stuff we have here in a loom will work. It's just kind of a pain in the ass that I have. they don't have a cutter. So I'm just going to let heat do its job. Then, 
because this has holes, I think we could even match up to, let's see, can we match up to two holes even? Might get lucky with two holes on this matching, eh, well, one hole at least will match. So, if it was like this, we want to then bend, yeah, bend to 90. something like this. And then as the servo moves, this would move out of the way with a flap on it. Um, so this would be down like this. And then we'll put a piece of wood here or cardboard or something to block the hole. And, man, that's just going to be so simple. It's way simpler than what we started with. But, we learned some things. So that's good. So let me grab another piece of that small wood. Which looks like it's going to work pretty nicely. So we'll just hot glue through this. Of course, this gun is just not good. Gotta make a purchase. Get a better gun. Hey. What? Hey. What's up? Any estimate on the coffee ready for testing? Uh, ten minutes. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah, it'd be like 10 minutes-ish. Yeah, this is going to be so much quicker than the previous that we did. Just got to get the hot glue gun to heat back up. Be strong enough to hold all the food? That is a good question, Bolin. I think we're gonna find out. Is Robot Explorer no more? Uh, Robot Explorer has turned into uh, the Let's Do This Friday uh, experiments. So let's uh, let's or uh, Robot Explorer started to get less about exploring and more about just experimenting. So now we changed it up. So instead of Wednesdays, it's now Fridays, and we're just experimenting with all kinds of crazy stuff. We're probably going to bring it back, and we're going to do some exploration on Fridays, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the change. So the naming is different, but it's basically the same thing. Random question, it's been two months since I got a plush out of the machine, does it still have a chance to ever arrive? Um, oh yeah, it was Christian who asked that, that's true. That's true, Christian. Um, plush machine does have a chance to ever arrive. Yeah, it's like 45 days for them to ship it out, I think, even. Um, unfortunately, some of those have been extremely slow, but I haven't run into a situation where no one got their plush. So they seem to come 
uh, eventually. But unfortunately, we don't have too much control over the speed. Like we pay for the quicker speed. Some people get it within like a week and some people get it in like six weeks. But if you don't get it, do definitely let us know and we'll, we'll try to reship it again. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem when you're doing these sort of drop shipping from other countries. Uh, we were, in the beginning, we were shipping a lot of those ourselves. And then it just turns out that in Finland, the post is so expensive. Like the plush costs a certain amount, depending on which one you get. And then the shipping ends up being like 30, 40 euros to get somewhere in the world. And it's like ridiculous. So we started just drop shipping it directly from the supplier. But then the supplier seems to be pretty bad at shipping them out. Or they lie about the shipping speed and you're paying for faster. Uh, so yeah, that's something we have to improve going forward. Not entirely sure how to do it yet. Uh, but yeah, if you don't receive it, let's say within three months from the time when you uh, won it, then uh, definitely let us know. And we'll have to re redo that for you. Because, I mean, of course, we want you to get your plushie. It's not, we're not trying to scam anybody here. Uh, okay, I think the hot, I think it's all ready. Okay, so let's. Let us get to gluing. I mean, Yanov, Yaniv, which uh, which plushie was it that you won? Like, which which machine was it, or what game was it that you uh, you won it on? This is apparently the way I have to use this because the trigger is not grabbing the glue. So I gotta push it by hand. Machine Pokeclaw three, so it was a Pokemon one. Okay, you get them. It took nearly three months for you to get it. No, yeah, it's the. It depends on the type of prize too. I mean, some of the people have been getting the Pokemon ones super quick, and then others took a while. Um, it's the same with those Pikachu's. Like Jeffman has a million Pikachu's, and some of them are still coming that he won a long time ago. Uh, so it's seems to be kind of hit or miss when they ship those things out. I don't know if it's in China that it gets stopped and it takes a while, or is it when it gets into Europe or to wherever else does it get stopped for a while. 
or is they're just not shipping it out on time. It's uh, it's it's interesting because sometimes they're really quick, but that's kind of what happens, especially now during this Corona stuff. It's been things have seemingly taken longer, but I also that's the kind of excuse they give too. They want to say it's Corona um, when they ship it and it doesn't it doesn't get there on time. They're like, ah, oh, it's Corona, but other things come super quick, so, and that's during Corona, so I don't know. Okay. All right, so I think next thing is we're going to zip tie this. Yeah, we'll test if this will hold the weight. Um, I have to make it even stronger. But that's a good point, uh, Christian. I think it was wasn't was it Christian who said that? question is will this even be enough with the zip tie on the servo here might have to determine how much food we can really put in the tube and then I'll cut the tube at the point where it's just uh, not enough like it's uh, not enough strength to hold it so we don't overfill and break and I think I'm also going to hot glue this a bit. Give just some friction, not really sticking power, but just friction. Like these zip ties are really slippery, I can feel right now. Um, so just mopping power here. So maybe they move, won't move around as much. This gun is really bad. We definitely are going to order a new gun. This is just not working. Trying not to heat up the servo. I don't know if this thing has plastic gears. Probably does. So I'd rather not take the chance of melting the in servo internally. Something like this. Um, so when the server opens, it's like this, or it'll be more smaller of a movement. And that's pretty much the mechanism. This is like a super, super simple. 
so I'm just going to try to get some more hot glue in there, hoping we can keep it without um, falling off during the event. question if I melted the servo or not. We will find that out when we get over to ESCO in a couple minutes. Uh, dropped a servo arm somewhere. Oh, here it is. So next we'll be screwing it to this and hooking it to the site. If we started with this in the beginning, we would already be testing. Um, but again, we learned dog pellets jam a lot. Yeah, let's see if this is actually going to have enough strength. Um, so let's go over and get this thing screwed in. And I think we are ready to test. <laughs> yeah. Definitely got to order a new gun. I'm from Florida. So it's exactly what we say. Got to order a new gun. Yes. Well, this is the one everybody wants. The Bulbasaur Pikachu. But none of our claw machines have that. No. The only place you could ever win this was Sumo Box. It's very expensive, actually. Yeah, I know. This was for actually Japanese. Well, it says made in Ch China, but it's the Japanese. It says made in China, but it's all Japanese words. All that's Japanese. Okay. Oh, yeah, made in China. Yeah, this is the coolest. Or the Charizard one. This may be cooler, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm just screwing this in and then we'll give it to Esco. I spent like an hour on the first version and then I was like, is there a better way? And then this is the better way. I think. We'll see when we get to the server. The, while you're scoring, should we put the electric charges to your hand? <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody can electrocute me while I'm working. This will be real nice. Okay, apparently these screws are not for this. 
think I'm closing be this. No, no, just hold on. I need different screws. Um, all right. Open. Okay. I'm just on a wild screw chase, trying to find a screw that fits in this, which I can screw into uh, this blocker. Um, but apparently. It's some sort of a metric screw that I cannot find. Too shabby. So once I screw this in, it's going to be solid, and you're just going to control. And we're going to see how much we should move this this angle and how fast. I wonder if it gets stuck. Well, if, if it gets stuck, though, it should still keep it closed. Yeah. So that's a good thing. And this has some flappiness. But I mean, if it gets stuck enough that even when it's open, it doesn't, you know, give anything out, and then it doesn't close because it's stuck. Oh no, it, it's it's gravity. It's like this, so it's gonna fall out. Yeah, I guess. We just need to see what's the angle, and then how fast we want to to open. Yep. So we can start testing that soon. I just need a. No, I need to find a screwdriver and stuff. Get all this. Solid. I see the plan has changed a bit during this. Yeah. Day. I mean, this is definitely easier. Yeah, that seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, if it works. I think I'm also going to hot glue around this a bit and give it more strength. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, probably five minutes ish. Yeah, no. Hurry from my side. You guys play poker? Yeah. All right. I'm ready whenever. All right. Yeah, I'll be right back.
Now we need a little hex. The thing I don't like about these hobby servos is they're so flimsy, these attachments to the gears, using such tiny little screws, and they're always falling off, and my fingers aren't super small or anything, so it's hard to hold on to these. theory, this should go like this, and go down like that. That is the, the goal, at least. Hopefully very fast. Um, that is the stopping point of the servo. I did measure there, so it won't go any further than that. So we don't risk damaging it. So now we just have to figure out how fast that should drop, and can this hold a lot of weight? How much of the dog food can actually be in there? I think I'm also going to dab a little bit of hot glue around this. It's only one screw right now holding this. Again, that's what I'm saying. Like It's such a small little flimsy thing. It's like one screw. Um, but that's what we got. So... We are almost at testing time, which is pretty nice. I know it's the first time we were kind of going back and forth on this, which would work if this is more robust, but if you turn this when it's jammed, it's going to rip the top off, which is hot glued. Now this seems to be fine, if it can hold the weight. If it can't, we have to make this bracket stronger, um, and maybe even go with a bigger servo. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, a better servo, if if I had one, some servos, so like here's the drive side, but then they usually also have, not usually, but some servos have another pivoting point on this side. So you could have it bracketed both sides to move. So right now we only have it on one side, but this bracket could come down and then be on the other side. But we'll see. All right, looks pretty good. Should we go try it out? Let's go. Let's go test it. Yeah, the power is there, so it's easier to bring that there than okay. the other way around. Still using the lab power. Oh crap! I got 13 seconds. Move, move, move. <laughs> 13 seconds. My battery's gonna run out. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. That was on the last second. It said your phone is shutting off in one second. And then I got here right and plugged it in. Whoa. Whoa, nice uh, mounts you have there. <laughs> yeah, this also just fell apart. <laughs> that was insane. That said one, I was on the last second. <sighs> All right, now the question is how am I going to move it from this power to get over there now? Oh. <laughs> or where do you want to go? Well, the power, well, I can bring this power to the there. So you're going to bring your laptop here? 
Later, I'll just mount this to something. But this holds quite a lot of food. So this should work. Uh, actually, I can probably find a way to mount this already. All kinds of random stuff, so yeah, that's everything true. just works. You can always find something. Hitting the roof, though. planning to have it in the space like we just have that in the center there or maybe i don't know i guess we'll have to figure out how can, like can your dogs like you know lean on this so that it falls over or uh, like when probably. they get excited about the food probably <laughs> it needs to be most like so high that they cannot you know come here and take a grip but <laughs> maybe maybe that's, i guess we'll have to see yeah. i have to keep yelling at the dog no get down Okay, so what is setting on the server right now? Like, is it all the way? It's all the way on a max on one end. Okay, does it have like? So the other side, I guess, ends. We don't want to. Do that yeah, one. so that's. But it's it's this is a stopping point though. Okay. Maybe. All right. So we start with very small degrees. <laughs> well, the degrees are full right now, so I need to make some adjustments. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like. Go start through. with smaller. Yeah. I'll get my laptop. Okay. Uh, Check it out. I think I have a pivoting mount somewhere. Or I just zip tie. Do you feel what level can? No. Niin, mutta siis tässä täs ei toivottavasti kauan kestä, että mun puolesta voidaan jatkaa kyllä niin. pokeria sitten vielä, jos te pystytte pitämään joku pienen tauon tässä näin ja sitten jatketaan. Niin, no varmasti. Toivottavasti... Jos haluaa liitellisiä joku käydä, niin mä voin kyllä maksaa takaisin sitten jos. Mä alkus, mitä? <laughs> That's the most common tool we have, zip ties. I think all our events are based on basically zip ties. No, they, they definitely work. Yeah, they could be up pretty high and there's nothing for them to knock over. So maybe, and then we just screw through this. Or something. I know we got a ton of these somewhere. Just see that. Yeah, 
Mulle käy joku tahan, valit käy joku, joku vaihtoehto. Right. Uh, so yeah, on the go, does it like? Looks promising, says Yanev. Yes, thank you. Proves that over-engineering is not always good. Yeah, I mean this, this definitely lower engineering quality than the last one, but if it works. How about having a speaker and some option to play commands like telling a dog to sit? Yeah, that's what somebody else asked. Or was it you in the in the Discord bowl? And somebody asked. But yeah, what do you think about that? If we just had my voice, and if they hit a certain key, it's like, sit, stay, yeah, or, or they, and it's they, my voice. But we were thinking text-to-speech, but text if it was my speech, voice, yeah, though. Would, yeah, but, yeah. Because my dogs really will. Work, yeah. Then it needs to be, like, pre-recorded comments. Yeah, like, they're not going to listen to some robot. Okay, sit, dog. <laughs> sit now, dog. And they're like, the heck is that lady? Who is the heck? So I think it has to be me going, sit. Hey, no humping, no humping, because they're going to hump each other. That's the thing that they do as well. So you have to be like, no humping. Spin. They do spin. They know how to give paw. They know how to do voice. So, I mean, if we did have my voice say stuff, maybe they could do stuff if people controlled it. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> Fabian's like, I don't need to know all that. Yeah, they will hump. That is inevitable. They're going to get so excited. Yeah, somebody or asked for it. They said it would be better to, uh, for, um, it's better reward for dogs than just giving treats is to tell them, good boy, and things like that. Which would be nice. But I mean, how much would we have to do to get that to work? That if they clicked a button, it would play a certain sound. Is that too difficult? Because I mean, we had that on like a claw. The bloop, 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 bloop. Mm. So I guess it's basically there, right? Yeah, but it, like on claw, it plays it on the, you know, on the front, end, not on the actual play. Like ah, the tr scene of the true. Event. Yeah, it's not triggering something in real yeah. life. Uh, most likely, that's not super difficult, but. Let's yeah. see the basics here. Yeah, let's see if this works yeah, first. When I turn this on and this thing shoots backwards, and <laughs> there is a couple of injuries here, then yeah. maybe we need to tone it down a bit. But. Yeah, Fabian, I was just thinking if it's on your turn, so there's no real spamming, so you get like one click to pick to feed, to say something, maybe that would be. Oh, yeah, yeah, some zip ties are getting crushed already. It's already going the wrong direction. The wrong direction? How's it going past the block? The what block? It's going to the right. It's not supposed to go to the right. Okay, okay. I have, uh, I made um, some simple controls. We can just manually wave that around so we can see what are the actual okay, so, levels we should go for. So go the opposite direction. Because <laughs> now place. it's breaking it. There you go. And now I'm going to have to bend. But yeah, it yeah, right seems there. like to work. But the zip line is pretty unfortunate that if it cannot ever do... Well, we don't want it to go that direction. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Whoa. Well... <laughs> I think you might need some... Well, stop destroying it. <laughs> uh, that's... Uh, okay. But can you pick, like, a point for it to stop? Like? Yeah, yeah, I can. So make it stop somewhere safe. The issue is I don't know which is the right direction to stop it at. So we need to do a bit of testing here to see. I need to tighten this again. That's the thing that's messing it up. It's tiny little screws, man. Uh, I need to feel it.
Right. Now it's charged up, so I can't move it. Yeah. yeah. I'm pushing the limits. Let's see. Okay, what's it gonna do? Run by itself? No, it's. I still have the manual control, but. Okay. I I like put some limits, but it's the maximum there and here, so we okay. can start to find the right maximums, and then we can do just the like movement from okay. edge to edge. Up. Did you do some testing already with like having the beads in and they drop there? Uh, I did it by hand. Okay. Not with the servo, but just... Okay. It was kind of interesting because when it goes down, they come out, and when it goes back up, it flings them. So it's kind of like a nice benefit that it was like, and mm. they fly versus just falling. Let's see how fast you can get it. Does that look kind of slow? What you just said. Okay. Does it go faster than that? Well, we can it's see. It's supposed to go it's 60 too... degrees, like that would be here and back. Or no, just from here to here in 0.1 seconds. Okay. That's the speed it says. Okay, now this is the up limit. Is that good? Where is the up? Right there? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can rebend it and I'll make it. And then the down limit needs to be like much. that. Only these or more? Yeah, like this. This is going to be probably already too much. Really? Yeah. Because there's going to be so much weight behind it. So when it opens, they're just going to want to pour out. Mm. So, so that like about quickly, passed there. Yeah, a lot And faster. we'll check it out. Yeah. Okay. I'll do faster speeds. As fast as speed possible. for testing this kind of a basically we have a like couple of concepts for inputs on our side there's switches that are basically on off buttons and then there is joysticks which are on your mobile it's like a joystick that you can move but on on the uh, pc you can bind them to like for example uh, arrows or like vast keys right uh, so i did like i can now control with like uh, a and d or uh, arrows, I can just manually control it, and then I made like if I press space, it tries to do the automatic flip. So we can test both here. Okay. How does it work? Okay. So you could just really quickly do W or eighty. Yeah, we can manually test with these, and but with this we can do the like the actual from program. actual like the flip. Okay. So you'll with space you'll go there and back. Yes. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's pretty. Easy to set up with the SDK currently, so it's pretty nice to kind of see how easy it is to work with. All right. Is the camera hooked up and everything too right now or no? Yeah, the camera is also hooked up, so we can put that there and we will see the image also. Oh. Let's see. Is that kind of speed we want to go for or? Probably even faster. Actually, we need to do it the other way around, and it needs to be fuller. Yeah, more distance. Yeah. I wonder why this gives more distance than that. Ah, because it's not minus one. 
think it needs to be upper minus one and one. But yeah, I guess in the real game, I'll take the manual control away, so people cannot manually use yeah. it. Although that would be pretty nice in some type of, but it cannot be feeding dogs because otherwise yeah, you, just you can drop two kilos yeah. into the floor on your one turn. Yeah, I don't think we want to do but that. But it could work with some other type of game where we could open something. Like yeah, having the options on this, yeah. that's true. Balancing there. Okay, should I just do one? Yes, it needs to. At the beginning, it needs to, needs to make sure that it starts from the minus one point. Or like from the top. Is that what it is? Zero position is up. Yeah, I, no, it's actually from minus one to one right now. One is when it's totally open and minus the one is when it's closed. Lähtekö käymään kaupassa? Kyllä me kohtas. Äh, missäkö sä käyt? Okei. Okay. Ah, uh, cause you only had three tries. Cause it's still set on the last one. No, no, it's, it, it, there is only 30 seconds. I can have unlimited tries this time. I guess we will have only one try though. In the real thing. Was it open enough or do we need more openness? Uh, it might work. We should test it with the dog. Yeah. I'm just going to tighten this. These little screws are not very good. Yeah, guys, we could use this one instead. 300 kilos can crush the uh, dog on the way out. Turn it into powder. I don't think this tractor yet, though. Will. This will totally yeah. crush. <laughs> dog trees are a bit harder than this uh, structure here. Oh, uh, possible. I can't find that screwdriver. Is that? Oh, wait, it's here. Not really sure how many secrets we are giving out here by streaming my screen that has all kinds of potentially secret information. Probably too big of a gap here. Let's see. Yeah, we. Yeah, it may, maybe works out out of the box. Maybe, maybe. Uh -huh. I typed the wrong password here. So. Oh. Can I see your hands when you're typing? I guess. <laughs> That's actually pretty bad. <laughs> is my oh, it's like the whole keyboard. <laughs> 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 
That's uh, that's alarming information there. <laughs> is this gonna be a vote afterwards? Like, uh, is it, okay. Pretty nice. Can you take some parts out? <laughs> <laughs> well, this password is like, oh my, oh my. <laughs> well, I typed it so fast, no one saw anything. <laughs> Luckily, I use last pass for everything. Next thing, everything starts shutting down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the lights go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's our alias, root password for our alias admin. <laughs> Maybe I aim it so that you don't see my keyboard. I'm gonna have to tighten this gap up for sure. Can we try it out? All right, go for it. Let's see if it's <laughs> that gap is humongous. <laughs> <laughs> you have almost them falling out already. You, your thing went the opposite direction. Opposite direction. Or is that it went to the negative one? Yeah, maybe. Okay. It's going the. <laughs> It's giving them out. <laughs> it's like a mouth. <laughs> yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, it's, 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 nice, <laughs> it's right? actually working yeah. quite decent. <laughs> it's perfection. <laughs> no edit needed. <laughs> I think it's perfect. The whole thing is falling off though soon. You need a bit more, maybe. Strength. You know, strength here. The structure needs to be. But then strong. I think it's actually set. Yeah, yeah, it's. Totally Just look at that. that. That doesn't work. <laughs> They're like, Fabian says password was password one, two, three. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. Yeah. My They're saying. My password has been cracked now. Yeah, and y Yonip says, that's not bad. Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't, it actually worked. It was like a weird mouth. Just puking up dog treats. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Okay. What do you want to do next? Harden it a bit, or is that for tomorrow? Or uh, I guess we could do it tomorrow. I mean, I guess we proved it. This will work. I just need to get this tighter, and then strengthen this arm up, because this screw is already loose again, so it doesn't stay. And oh, we don't have the solid. ones that have it both way. Yeah. Or I think we do have somewhere. So maybe it changed it. Yeah, the code itself is pretty simple, so we can do it on whatever server yeah. you have, but... Yeah. Could do that. But yeah, I think we just... It worked. Every time you turned it, it let food out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it let it out the back and the front, which yeah, was not intended. Yeah, actually, the whole structure worked in advance a bit. Yeah, it was just kind of going... It's, yeah, it's... Not, it's just like, I don't know, it's looked funny at least, like it was just puking it out. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> That's some surrogate quality clip there. We can make a tutorial, how do you make this? <laughs> <laughs> Two zip ties, you need three, four zip ties, some hot glue. How about you, you, you know, only attach, like we have those, like how do you call those, like like this kind of a plate that is already in this shape. You know, the, you, you use those to like put two planks together in a 90 de degree cor corner, you know, those. This kind of, yeah, yeah. I, I'll get you what I No, I know, mean. I know what you're talking about. We have those. Yeah. They're kind of really thick and heavy. But so uh, if of, that's... And it's, you only have this point to attach. This one, those, the problem is the screw. It keeps coming loose. Hmm. 
So I'm, I might try to do an arc weld on this because we have a micro welder. So I might be able to weld it, but I don't know. This is some galvanized know, steel and this is aluminum. Yeah, but it doesn't seem to be the the, uh, the the problem area. It's the screw. Might just stick something off of here and just give some support from this side. Not not rigid, but something uh, somewhat flexible that at least makes it doesn't drop. Or, or I find another arm that's better than this. Maybe that's the better way to go. You know this. Yeah, I know. Like perfection there. Just have that there and that's well, it. Yeah, the problem is you're again on one screw. Yeah. And then that's going to get loose. Well, I'm actually going to get find, anyway. But... I'm going to find another one of those red things. Maybe there's a better version in here somewhere. Mm. Is that, maybe there's one that is longer and has more screw holes. Like this one already is better. Oh, true. It's got multiple screw holes. I don't know if it's any longer though. Might just have to make another bracket. Nah. But it has more screw holes. So there's an option. Um, Yeah, like this one here has the pivot on one side and then the gear on the other. So we could just bend a piece of metal that's like a U. And then it would have structure on both sides. Hmm. So we could probably use this. Unless there's another one in here. Actually, here's one. It has it on both. That's so we just make a U bracket on it. 25, is that enough? Yeah. Okay. I think, I mean, it's, I don't think we need too much. Actually, we have a lot of these the yeah. different ones that have the, on the other side. So maybe tomorrow I'll make a bracket, a U bracket that goes here. And then we don't have the weird puking mouth <laughs> anymore from the side <laughs> of its mouth, at least. <laughs> All right. I guess that works. Good stuff today. Yeah. Let's just revisit this tomorrow. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow. It's already uh, in Finland. 7.29 at night. So I think we'll end it here. And I'll pick this back up tomorrow. And we'll do some testing, maybe. Maybe I'll bring my dogs. We'll do a test. Do they do anything? And then we can see if you have to change the thing. Yeah. Like, do they actually eat the food? <laughs> or to just look at it like... That would be interesting one now. Like, what the hell is this? No one eating any food. <laughs> yeah, somebody was saying, you have to just end up dressing up like a dog. <laughs> pretending, ah, give me the food. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to end the live stream. We'll pick this up tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope it was entertaining, at least. You got a couple weird uh, prototypes, but I think tomorrow, now that we learned about this, we're going to have a, a good one. So, anyways, I will see you guys then. See you tomorrow.